Everybody's talking about the Jeep Wagoneer and the Jeep Grand Cherokee, so what am I doing with the Compass? Well, for 2022, the interior is brand new, and that means a lot more technology, most of which you'll find in the bigger Jeeps. The whole Jeep lineup is moving up market, so that means that the popular little Jeeps like the Compass got to keep up. Subscribe to the Car Guru's YouTube channel if you want more Jeep reviews. And we got more coming. The Wrangler 392 with the Extreme Recon package. The Grand Wagoneer. It's all here. This compass points in a direction that very few compact SUVs bother to go anymore. Off-road. It's the Trailhawk, and it's the only compass worthy enough to wear the Jeep Trail Rated badge. Plus, it's the coolest looking compass, which earns it my badge of approval. This compass came out for 2017, and it looks just as good then as it does now. The Trailhawk, it might seem like an appearance package, because you do get this gloss black roof, you get the hood decals, the red tow hooks, but it really is the real deal. It's raised one inch, so you get 8.6 inches total of ground clearance, and it rides on these Falcon Wild Peak all-terrain tires. The front and rear faces have also been redesigned for better approach and departure angles. That's crucial when you're going off-road. And if you do hit anything, it's got more steel skid plates to protect the underbelly. The compass looks pretty good from the back as well. It looks like it's a little Jeep. It's a Jeeplet. My favorite feature, though, is this. This may be the best reason to buy a Trailhawk, even if you don't go on a trail. It's called driving in the city, and if someone parks next to you, well, they're going to get their bumper destroyed. And your expensive Jeep bumper should be pretty fine. But you can actually use it for real purposes, too. I'm not saying that's the only reason. Has a tow hitch as well, 2,000 pounds max trailer. That's another option. And the cargo space is actually better than the Cherokee. This is nine inches shorter than the Cherokee, and yet the cargo space is a little bit more. 27 behind the seats and 60 when they're folded. So more room than you'd expect in this car. You won't recognize the compass in here. Now a few switches and stocks remain, but everything else Jeep threw out the window. And thank goodness they did. All the materials are better, and the whole dash is just slimmer and it's layered. You got this nice textured midsection here. It's really good. The panel fit is tighter and allows room for this accent trim curving underneath. The air vents blend into the top panel. The whole console is new. It's wider and finished in shiny black plastic. There's a toggle switch for the drive modes, USB-C ports, new climate controls, and the electric parking brake moves to the right of the shifter. The steering wheel is new, including this airbag housing, which is smaller. It just feels more rectilinear, like the whole rest of the theme of this dash. Now, what I also like is that it doesn't remind me of a rental car. Everything just looks and feels more upscale. This is a roomy back seat for a small crossover. I am not crouched at all, and I've got a nice big panoramic moonroof. We got an Alpine stereo. I also have rear air vents, rear USB, 115 volt power outlet, and optionally, rear heated seats. Now, as nice as this interior is, and it is good, for $41,315 total with destination, I think it could be a little bit better. But the Uconnect 5 screen up front, that helps justify the price. An 8.4 inch screen is standard on the Sport and Latitude. This is the 10 inch, which comes on the Latitude Lux and three other trims, including the Trailhawk. It's clear, fast, and simple as before, only the graphics are a lot sharper. There's wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto, but the rest of the interface is pretty good where you don't really need this. It's really easy to adjust a lot of different settings, including all the safety and driving assistance functions that are standard now for 2022, including blind spot, forward braking with pedestrian detection, and lane keep assist. Now, later, the Compass will offer a highway assist, like on the Grand Cherokee, but this one is too new. It is coming later for the 2022 model year. The 360 cameras are really good. Lots of different views. Pretty high res. Nice to see so many different views going on here. The digital instrument panel has some multiple views. You can even press this button to see everything at a carousel, so you can see multiple information at a glance. You can also change that again. Analog gauges digital gauges with this tachometer that kind of looks like a compass and it will show you various different information like your driving modes nice little animations now it's not as full featured as the same digital instrument panel you'll find in the new Grand Cherokee but a lot of it is there this is a 2.4 liter 4 with 180 horsepower and 175 foot-pounds of torque sounds okay until you have to actually go somewhere with it it's just loud, it's rude, and crude. <laughs> it is. There's no getting around it. This is an old Fiat engine. Not too far ago, 
Jeep and Chrysler and Fiat were all one. And this is some of the products that were left over. It wasn't really good at the start when the Compass was new for 2017. And now for the 2022 model year, it's not any better. The good thing is that there's a nine speed automatic transmission. There's still a six speed automatic on the Sport and Latitude, but the nine speed is standard everywhere else. The only problem is, is that there's still a lot of gaps and shifting. So if I just wanna, it just kind of feels like the car is almost getting off the gas in between the shifts. Like there's a lack of power. I don't know what's going on, but it just the programming is just, I'm just trying to get up a hill. <laughs> We're only doing 45 miles an hour. Sounds like I'm doing 100. But this is kind of an engine of old. A lot of new cars these days have turbos and even the naturally aspirated fours, like the ones in the Mazdas, they're just better behaved. They're quieter, they're smoother. You don't get this type of feeling. But in this Jeep, gosh, yeah, it's, it's not a good experience. But when things quiet down, and they do when you're up to speed, feels a lot better. Once you're at a constant speed in the Compass, the behavior's actually pretty good because there's actually a lot of noise insulation in here. These all-terrain tires don't hum. They're pretty smooth. So honestly, it feels pretty good in here. You can actually have a conversation, not yell, <laughs> and actually enjoy the comfort. It's really tuned for that. This is more of an on-road Jeep. And despite the steering not really being as precise, it certainly is no Wrangler. So you get in this vehicle and you can definitely drive for a long distance and be comfortable. My only gripe with the steering is that it just is pretty lifeless and there's not a lot of off-center feel. So if you turn a little bit, the wheels don't really do anything and you're kind of moving the wheel like this and not much is happening. <laughs> really, that's not what you come to expect in any car-based crossover these days. This is more like a traditional Jeep and that's an area where traditional Jeeps are not very good. So if you just point this Jeep straight and don't worry about steering or accelerating too hard, it works pretty well. And the brakes actually are really one of the finer touches of the Compass. They feel really good, really direct. Honestly, I wish that the steering felt just as linear and perfect as this, but it doesn't. Fuel economy is okay. With this four wheel drive, it's 22 city, 30 highway, and 25 combined right up there with a lot of other vehicles in this size and class. So the engine itself doesn't penalize you for fuel it's using, but it certainly will penalize you in power and noise and refinement <sighs> if you don't have any. But the thing you do get with this Jeep, especially the Trailhawk, is the all-wheel drive system. I'm calling it all-wheel drive and not four-wheel drive because truly, this is operating like a front wheel drive vehicle until it senses slip, and it can send up to 100% of that torque to that rear axle. So it's not like the other true Jeep four wheel drive systems that are always in four wheel drive. However, this does have a low range with a 20 to one crawl ratio, which is pretty impressive. And I can lock it here as a four wheel drive lock button so I can get that 50-50 split if I want to. So that is nice. So it's kind of a hybrid between four wheel drive and a conventional all wheel drive system. And that goes above and beyond what a lot of other crossovers do, like say from Honda or Toyota. Do a little bit more here. I'll just go on a little light trail. I'm not off-roading because let's be honest, if I was, I'd rather be in the big Wrangler, but this is a little baby Jeep and it can still do Jeep things. Remember the Trailhawk is the only one that's actually trail rated, has that badge on it because the regular one just could not keep up. What's nice about it too is that, well, you have four different driving modes. There's a rock mode that's only on the Trailhawk. And that's pretty nice if you really wanna bite off some big rocks, I suppose, in your, in your driveway or a little stick that I just ran over. But for most people, these are just gonna be things that you're gonna say take to a state park or you're gonna go down a boat ramp. Something with a little bit more authority than say a regular crossover. It's really not much different than say running with trail, you know, trail running shoes that you'd put on versus regular cross country shoes. They are a little firmer, they grip a little bit more. That's what you're getting with this Jeep. A little bit more capability, but not that much more. The Compass starts at 25,240, just a few thousand below a Cherokee and a few hundred above a Renegade. The Compass Trailhawk with all the options is 41,315. This trim competes with the Ford Bronco Sport, Toyota RAV4 TRD Off-Road, and the Subaru Forester Wilderness. 
For off-road prowess, this Jeep will hold its own, no doubt. Many other competitors like the Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross and Nissan Rogue aren't as capable. But say the new 2023 Kia Sportage X-Pro? That looks like it would be a better everyday alternative, and it does come with all-terrain tires. If you're not going on a trail, other SUVs like the Mazda CX-5, Hyundai Tucson, and Honda CR-V are much better to drive. The Compass may not be the best value among compact SUVs, but the all-new interior and all the technology that comes with it, they're deserving of a second look. I can tell Jeep has done a good job here. It looks like a polished product in and out, except it's not totally. That engine, really old, should be thrown out. The steering, I think, should be retuned. Now, based on those things alone, I can't recommend the Compass. However, if you're not that concerned about performance and that doesn't bother you, there's a lot of good traits about this vehicle. It's still a really good city commuter, and it's very comfortable. Certainly capable off-road, too. So what do you think? Would you buy one? Would you buy other compact SUVs? Well, you should subscribe to the Car Gurus YouTube channel because we review everything. You can find reviews right here on YouTube or at cargurus.com. So be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.